الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد uh, We are continuing our classes, Sunday classes every Maghrib Insha'Allah and we are studying or talking and reading about Arba'in uh, Nawawiyya, the 40 Nawawiyas and we are in the second hadith Second hadith uh, Know for a fact, O Muslim that if uh, somebody would tell you to choose a hadith from the thousands and tens of, of thousands of a hadith that you should pick only one if you would pick one hadith from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it would be this hadith it would be this hadith this hadith the ulama have said this is the most important hadith a Muslim should understand and should memorize even if possible and should really apply and it gathers the matters of Islam, all of it. Al-usul, usul al-Islam, the fundamentals of Islam, it is all combined in this hadith. As a matter of fact, some of the ulama, they said, they described this hadith as Umm al-Sunnah. This is the most important hadith in Sunnah, the mother of Sunnah. Just like Al-Fatiha, Umm al-Kitab, the mother of the book is Al-Fatiha. Because why? Because Al-Fatiha, actually is a summary of the whole of Qur'an. Fatiha is a summary of the whole Qur'an. And this hadith is a summary of, whole, of all the ahadith. It covers all of the aspects of, of Islam. طيب, the hadith was on the authority of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Let me just one second. Uh, yeah, there you go. No. Our moderator, yes, confirm. Sorry, people always uh, fight in the comment section, so I have to shut them off, <laughs> shut it off. Turn off comment. There you go. Okay, alhamdulillah. On the authority of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu, قال, بينما نحن جلوس عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. We were sitting with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم, one day. إذ طلع علينا رجل شديد بياض الثياب. وشديد سواد الشعر. A man walked in and he was wearing bright, clean white clothes and his hair is dark black. لا يرى عليه أثر السفر. It doesn't show that he is a traveler. ولا يعرفه منا أحد. And nobody knows him. Back then, when someone's traveling, you will definitely know. You look at him. He's dusty, he's bad, maybe he's having some luggage on him. So you will know that this person is traveling. Tayyib, logically speaking, if he's not traveling, we know him. He's part of the tribe or Quraysh or someone have, knows this person. So nobody knows him and he doesn't seem like he came from outside as a traveler. Who's this man? It's very weird. لا يعرفه من أحد حتى جلس إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأسند ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه. He came and he sat in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he bent his knees just like uh, we, we sit in, in uh, tashahud in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam almost touching the knees, very close to him. And he put his hand on his thigh. Whose thigh? His thigh or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's thigh? The ulama differed. They said, no, his thigh. Other ulama, they said, no, on the thigh of the Prophet ﷺ. But the correct saying, Wallahu ta'ala alam, he put it on his own thighs. On his own thighs. So, then he said, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni anil Islam. O Muhammad, tell me about Islam. Faqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet replied back to him, he said, Al-Islam an tashhada an la ilaha illa Allah wa anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Islam, is that you confirm and you bear witness that there is no deity but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. And you establish prayer. And you give charity or the zakah, the obligatory charity. And you fast in Ramadan. And you perform your pilgrimage. If you are able to. So the man replied to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sadaqt, you're right. Umar said, فَعَجِبْنَا لَهُ We're amazed, we're shocked. Why is he asking him and telling him you're right? Uh, you're, you know, the questioner, if he's asking, he doesn't know the answer. But it seemed like this person knows the answer to the question. فَقَالَ أَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِيمَانِ Tell me about Iman. 
So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال أن تؤمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر وتؤمن بالقدر خيره وشره That you believe in Allah and the angels and the books and the prophets or the messengers and the day and the and judgment day and you believe in the qadr, the decree of Allah, whether it is good or bad. فقال صدقت, you are right. فقال أخبرني عن الإحسان. Tell me about إحسان. What is إحسان? And I'll explain what إحسان is uh, and elaborate about it. قال أن تعبد الله كأنك ترى. That you worship Allah as if you see him. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَى فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ And if you don't see Allah, He sees you. قَالَ فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنْ أَمَارَاتِهَا Tell me about the signs of this judgment day. فَقَالَ مَا الْمَسْؤُولُ عَنْهَا بِأَعْلَمَ مِنَ السَّائِلِ I know as much as you know. I know as much as that means I don't know. فَقَالَ فَقَالَ أَنْ تَلِدَ الْأَمَةُ رَبَّتَهَا Then the Prophet elaborated. I know as much as you know. And then he explained, he said, That the slave girl would give birth to her master. That you see the poor people who have no clothes and no shoes or slippers, that they are competing with big tall buildings, towers. Then he left. And we all stayed waiting for the Prophet to answer, to tell us what's going on. فَقَالَ النَّبِي يَا عُمَرْ أَتَدْرِي مَنِ السَّائِلِ Oh Umar, you know who is, who, is, uh, who is that person, who was that person? فَقُلْتُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَعْلَمْ Allah and his messenger knows, O oh messenger of Allah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, he said, فَإِنَّهُ جِبْرِيلْ أَتَاكُمْ يُعَلِّمُكُمْ دِينَكُمْ It is Jibreel, the angel, Gabriel. He came to teach you your religion. Like I said, this is a great hadith that wallahi everybody should focus and understand and comprehend. As a matter of fact, it is uh, some of the ulama, they encourage people to read it among their family members, to understand the usul of the deen all combined in one hadith. This is wallahi from the mercy and the blessings of Allah. The first thing I want to point out is the manners when seeking knowledge. Jibreel alayhi salam, when he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's trying to teach the Sahaba and us eventually about Islam. How did he come and teach us? He showed the Sahaba how to speak to a person of knowledge, which is of course in that situation was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And who's the inter inheritor of the Prophet? The ulama, the scholars, the people of knowledge. And so it's very unfortunate, I say, and sad today we see Muslims they, they deal or they treat scholars as if they are, يعني, I don't know what to tell you, like the lowest of people, the lowest of people, like they are, they are workers under them. They scream, they talk to them in bad manners, they accuse them, they don't speak to them well. You have to be respectful when you seek manners. And many of the scholars, they say the barakah of ilm is when you value the people who are giving you ilm. Like if you have a teacher, if you have somebody who's teaching you, a mentor, a coach, definitely you will hold some respect for him. And the barakah of ilm, if you want to get good knowledge from someone, you have to respect that this person is giving you something. No doubt. So this is the first uh, lesson that Jibreel alayhi salam is telling us. That we have to respect and honor our scholars. Because they are our, the inheritors of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then, here is something very important. First, he asked about Al-Islam. Akhbirni an Al-Islam. And Al-Islam is the lowest of levels for us followers of this religion. Because me and you and even the munafiqeen are practicing Islam. Sahih? Because apparent, everybody's praying. But who is a munafiq and who's not? We don't know. This is the coming level, and I will explain Iman later. So the first level is Islam, and this is the lowest bare minimum of, of standards or status in Islam. The second thing that we need to understand is that Al-Islam, Akhbirni an Al-Islam, and he mentioned the five pillars of Islam, is that these are the apparent, apparent Islam. This is al-zahir min al-ibadah. 
that you worship Allah in your apparent physical body, whether it is shahada, you're saying, or you are doing salah, or you are doing siyam, which is refrain from food, or you are doing zakah, or you are doing hajj. All of these are physical and they are apparent. So this is the first thing. Tayyib, the first pillar of, of Islam is of course the shahada. And a shahada, subhanallah, today we see people, they don't even understand that. A shahada has two pillars, ruknain. Ma huma, anybody knows? Tayyib, what, but what are these two pillars of La ilaha illallah? La ilaha illallah. Okay. So these are the two pillars of La ilaha illallah. Tayyib. And then, وَتَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ And you bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger and his slave. Before we get into that, La ilaha illallah has a very specific meaning. Very specific meaning. Some of the Muslimin today, may Allah guide us all, what do they say? They say, La ilaha illallah means no creator but Allah. Every Muslim, his mind huh, has to be programmed. If I say, La ilaha illallah, ala tul you answer. You don't have to think. What it is? It's that there is no one worth worshipping but Allah. Not that there is no God, no creator. Of course, there is only one creator. But this word, this great word, is talking about worshipping Allah. Not about the Creator. It's talking about the one that is worshipped. That's why Kuffar Quraysh, do you think they don't know who Allah is? They know. They said, Allah created us. But the problem was, they got really physical and, uh, and, and aggressive and started fighting with the Prophet wasallam and went all crazy when the Prophet said, you have to confirm only worshipping one God. Don't put mediators, don't put wasta when you're worshipping Allah, only God, no, no idols, no anything like that. This is when they got angry and went crazy. So this is what the word means. Anybody who says, ma, ma ma'na la ilaha illallah, don't say la khaliqa illallah, no creator, la rabba illallah, no, galat. La ma'buda bihaqqin illallah, no one worth worshipping but Allah. This is the first thing. طيب. And of course, the second thing is that وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Today some people ask, Ya Akhi, there is this person I know that he believes only in one God. Is he a Muslim? Is he going to, he to heaven? I say, no, Habibi. Heaven has shurut, has conditions. One of the conditions is that you have to believe in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because if you don't believe in the Prophet, how are you going to worship Allah? How, how are you going to worship Allah? You tell me. What are you going to do? Uh, you're going to make up a, a worship by yourself? You cannot. Allah doesn't ex accept. You have to worship according to what, what the Prophet ﷺ came with. And so these are the two uh, pillars of ibadah. Ibadah, when you want to worship Allah. There are two things to make your worship acceptable. Number one is al-ikhlas. You have to worship who? You have to be sincere to Allah. Number two, okay, I am mukhlis to Allah. I don't believe of any God but Allah. Uh, number two is the condition that they call it al-mutaba'ah. Al-mutaba'ah is that you worship Allah according to the Prophet. Not according to your mind and your mazaj. No, according to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you combine these two pillars, then alhamdulillah. Now your acts of worship are accepted. You're sincere to Allah and you're following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This great word, has shurut. If somebody comes and he says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We say, hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Is this guy accepted? Muslim? We say, wait, maybe. But we have to confirm seven things. We have to confirm seven. These are, we call it, uh, shurut la ilaha illallah. These are the conditions of la ilaha illallah. What are they? Seven. Memorize and, they, and they're logical. The first is ilm, knowledge. If you don't understand what la ilaha illallah, how can you, how can it be accepted by you? You have to understand it. What does it mean? That's why when the non-Arabs come and say la ilaha illallah, we have to explain it to them. صح? You've seen that. When people want to do the shahada, first we explain it. 
We have reverts here. I think you've done this before, right? You say, La ilaha illallah means so and so and so and so. Okay, now you're going to say it in Arabic. So the first thing is ilm. The second thing is that al yaqeen that you don't have a doubt about it. Well, maybe La ilaha illallah. Maybe there is one God. Maybe there is two God. Maybe Muhammad is the Prophet. La, you nullified La ilaha illallah. So al yaqeen Yaqeen is no doubt, confirmation. The third is al qabul You have to accept it. Maybe someone is acting in a movie. And in the movie, his role is that he's a Muslim. And he says, La ilaha illallah. He didn't accept it. He's just acting. Is that, is that a Muslim? No. So al qabul acceptance. That's number three. Number four, al inqiyad That it, is, it guides you to life. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, Man qala la ilaha illallah bihaq aw bi nafsihi dakhal al jannah. Whoever says, La ilaha illallah, truly, then he will enter Jannah. So many people say, La ilaha illallah, doesn't pray, doesn't worship Allah, uh, drinks, alcohol, uh, zina, major sins, everything. How are you applying La ilaha illallah? Uh, La ilaha illallah only by your tongue? No. La ilaha illallah, you establish it in your life. And this is why this word is so great. And it's not easy. But you have to sacrifice. Al inqiyad. Then al sidq, that you're honest. When you say it, you're honest, you're not lying. Then sincerity, do it for the sake of Allah. Then al-mahabba, you love it. And you love everything that comes under it. Salah, siyam, hijab, zakah, charity, being good, being truthful. All this stuff, you have to love. Do you hate salah? Can a Muslim say, I hate salah? Can a Muslim say, I hate fasting? Cannot. Maybe your body hates it or your body maybe dislikes it because it's hard. But in yourself, your heart, you love it. Why? Because Allah loves it. And if Allah loves it, you have to love it. And this is why we say al-mahabba. Al-mahabba is one of it. طيب. Then comes... Where is it? Al-Ikhlas wal mutabah We talked about this. As-salah. Rukn al-thani huwa salah And this is one of the, the greatest. The greatest act of worship. As-salah. Why did they call it salah? Salah means... من الصلة. صلة. صلة means link. It is a link between you and God. It is a link between you and God. أنت تناجي ربك. You are, you are conversing privately with your Lord, with your God. That's how you worship Allah. And this is the only act of worship that Allah did not reveal to us down. He brought his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam up into the seventh sky to give him that order. Number one, because it is the most loved thing to Allah. Allah loves for us to worship Him in salah. Allah loves that. And that's why He made it five times a day. Every day. No holiday. No off. Unless, of course, you are a woman who has her period or whatever, then it's different. Of course, there are some people of excuse. Or you lost your mind or anything like that. But this salah is the, the, the pillar, one of the pillars of Islam. As a matter of fact, the ulama have differed in salah. Many of them said who leaves salah out of laziness. And Allah al -afiyah. today we see people like that. Muslim, from a Muslim family. Maybe his name is Muhammad and he doesn't pray. How, is, how does that work? Where's your iman? Where's your belief? Wallahi, I believe, believe is in the heart. Ah, Habibi, believe is in the heart and believe in your action. Can you say to your, uh, to your wife, I love you and never do a thing for her? Hit her and abuse her and say, I love you, I love you. How does that work? You say, you're lying, you're a hypocrite. You're not lying, you're not, you don't love me. Same thing with ibadah, same thing with when you say, I submit to Allah. Submit, yalla, submit. Do your acts of worship. Prioritize it in your life. And so, as salah, they differed. In if the person leaving it out of laziness, is he Muslim or not? Look how dangerous that is. Tamad, we don't want to get into that, that discussion. But just knowing that people are different, whether you're a Muslim or not, if you don't pray out of laziness, that by itself is a problem. That by itself should make someone يعني, fear Allah when it, when it comes to prayer. I want to talk to you about ahkam al-salah. This is something a bit important, but surely we'll derail from i'tiqad and we'll talk about fiqh shwaya. You have to bear with me. Now before I talk about uh, fiqh, and the uh, ahkam of salah, know that of course we have madahib and we respect all madahib. Some madahib say something else and other madahib say maybe something not the same. 
But I just want to give you a general understanding of salah. Salah has conditions. Some of the conditions of salah is time and tahara and wudu and Islam, of course. If a non-Muslim comes and says, hey guys, I want to pray with you. <laughs> Be Muslim first. Out of, you know, he comes and prays with us in the, in the, in the saf. This cannot happen. He can sit and watch if he wants. Tayyib. And then comes Arkan as salah And this is very important to know. Arkan as salah These are the pillars of Salah. A Salah is not accepted except with these Arkan pillars. The first is Takbirat al-Ihram. Allahu Akbar. Anybody who doesn't do, say, Takbirat al-Ihram, then his Salah is not even, didn't even start. Now raising your hand is Sunnah. If somebody just puts his hand here and says, Allahu Akbar, that's, is, is, that's acceptable. Second rukun, second pillar is Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha is a rukun. If somebody doesn't recite the Fatiha, whether it is publicly or privately, then his salah is not accepted. The third is Al-Tashahud uh, Al-Akhir. Al-Tashahud Al-Akhir, last Tashahud. It is a rukun. The fourth is Salam. The fourth is salam. Know this, this categorize them. These are the pillars, verbal pillars. Verbal pillars. Takbira, Fatiha, Tashahud, Salam. These are verbal pillars. Now comes to the physical pillars. What are the physical pillars? Standing up. Somebody who is well cannot sit down and pray. In obligatory prayer I'm talking, not sunnah prayer. Sunnah prayer you can't because the Prophet used to pray while he is on his camel. That is fine, sunnah. Obligatory, no. So, al-qiyam. Then, al-ruku'ah. Bowing down is a pillar. If somebody forgot ruku'ah, and I will talk about if you forget a ruku'ah, what will happen. So, ruku'ah is a pillar. Then, al-raf'ah. Getting up, standing from al-ruku'ah. That's another pillar. So, we got qiyam, ruku'ah, raf'ah. Then, sujood. That's a pillar. Prostration is a pillar. Then al-julus, julus bayna sujud Don't we sit down? That is also a rukun min arkan as-salah. Then al-tashahud al-akhir, the final tashahud where you say it, tashahud al-akhir. Uh, sorry, the sitting down of tashahud al-akhir, the sitting down of tashahud al-akhir. Then al-tartib that you are organized. You cannot do sujud before ruku' and you cannot mix them up. And last but not least, al-tumaanina. Al-tuma'nina means you are يعني, in ease in your prayer, in your movement. Some people I see, they are like warming up for a gym. Have you seen them? They go up and down, up and down. This is high salah batila. Cannot do that. I, have even see, I also saw once in Salat al-Tarawih, a very famous video. I think it was in Indonesia or something. Have you seen that? Imam goes up and down, up and down. High batila salah. This is not accepted. It's not a joke. Huh? Al-tuma'nina is one of the pillars of Islam. Like what happens if you miss a pillar? You're praying, first rak'ah, and you said, oh, I forgot Fatiha. What do you do? Khalas, your salah is gone? No. We have a solution for you. What is it? Is that you say that rak'ah is not counted. Whatever rak'ah you are in, that's what counts. You get it? So the first rak'ah, you forgot Fatiha. Now you're in the second rak'ah. You're like, I forgot Fatiha. Khalas, that's, that first rak'ah is gone. Forget about it. The rak'ah that you're in is the first rak'ah. Get it? Now what, then what do you do? Then after you do tashahud, you pray your salah. For example, it's salat al-dhuhr. You pray for. You finish your tashahud, your last tashahud. You do salam. Then you do sujood al-sahu. Sujood al-sahu. This is the prostration of forgetfulness. You do it after salam. Sorry, after salam. Then you do salam again. Now your salah is correct. طيب. If you miss a rukun, this is what you have to do. If you miss a rukun, this is what you have to do. طيب. I finished my salah. I finished. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm like, oh, I forgot one rak'ah. Or I forgot to fatiha. Or I forgot sujood. Your salah is gone. Repeat. You have to repeat. طيب. So this is arkan al-salah. And then there is one wajib. The wajib is the second tashahud, the first tashahud. The first tashahud in salah is wajib. 
What does wajib mean? Meaning if you, do you remember the second scenario? I said, if you forgot a rukun and you finish your salah, your salah is gone, you have to repeat. In wajib, if you forgot the first tashahud, the first tashahud, you forgot it and you're like, oh, I forgot the first tashahud. Your salah is nullified? The answer is no. You do sujood as -sahu. You do sujood as -sahu. And your salah, inshallah, is correct. But you don't leave tashahud, the first tashahud, which is wajib, you don't leave it intentionally. That's if you forgot. If you leave it intentionally, your salah is nullified. Get it? Your salah is nullified. This is the difference between rukun and wajib. Everything else is sunnah. Everything else is sunnah. A dhikr that you say, Subhana Rabbi al Azim, Subhana Rabbi al A'la, Sami Allahu liman hamida, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. All this is sunnah by the saying of Jumhur. The majority of scholars they say it is a sunnah. Imam Ahmad, some of these saying, he said that it is wajib, but the correct saying is that it is a sunnah. Doesn't mean that don't say it. Oh, say it. But I'm talking about whether you, fin you forgot it or didn't say it, etc. All these things. Uh, this is with regards to a salah. I just wanted to point out this because I think this is important and a lot of people maybe don't you know, fall into these mistakes. طيب, then the Prophet وسلم, told us about the, the third rukun, or yes, the third rukun, which is uh, a zakah. And a zakah, of course, it is one of the greatest rukun after the salah. وَالزَّكَاهُ هُوَ نَصِيبٌ مُقَدَّرٌ شَرْعًا It is a, a portion that is religiously or Islamically identified في مال in assets in Sharia, in Islam when we say mal it's not money it's anything that you own that has value your house is mal your car is mal your watch is mal this is what in, in religious terminology مُقَدَّرٌ شَرْعًا في مال مخصوص لطائفة مخصوصة It is taken from a specific group of people or type of people given to a specific type of people. That's it. There is two shuruq in, in zakah. The first shart, the first rule or condition is that بلغ النصاب بلغ النصاب that there is a certain amount that it should reach that makes you eligible for zakah. The second rule of zakah is what? Hala alayhi al hawl. That it took a whole hijri year with that nisab, that eligibility of amount it reached. Then you are eligible to pay zakah. That's how zakah is counted. Taban, there is zakah with uh, you know, uh, sheep and cattle. There is zakah in uh, sha'ir or you know, these, um, what do you call it? Uh, tamar, dates, and things like that. There's many zakahs. And also, and I want to just point out the zakah of mal. The zakah of mal is there. And a lot of people misunderstand. They think their salary has zakah and you have to pay it every month or every year. That's not true. You have to reach these two conditions. طيب, how do we calculate the eligibility of zakah? The first is we said, حَالَ عَلَيْهِ الْحَوْلِ What is the hawl? Or sorry, بلغ النصاب. What is the minimum amount that makes uh, your money eligible for zakah? That you have to pay zakah? Uh, for it is that it is equivalent to 85 grams of 20, 24 karat gold 85 grams of 24 karat gold that is today and it changes right gold changes today I think it is around 19,000 19,000 19, 19, 18,000 19,000 if somebody has that 18,000 and what's the second condition we said? Hala alayhi al This money stayed with you or more for a whole hijri year. Hello? And you're saving it, investing in it, anything. You're saving it, basically. Then that money you have to pay. How much? 2.5%. Calculate 2.5%. Give that money to, to the poor. Al-Muhtajin, poor people. And alhamdulillah, today... We have all these charitable organizations with a click of a button from your phone, you can send this money to them. Very easy. And they're, alhamdulillah, they are yani, trusted. One of them is Dar al Bir, which is, of course, uh, <laughs> who's handling this uh, muhadara. Maybe we should advertise for them after all. 
excuse me. So, 19, 1, 9. Dirham, dirham. Yeah, we're dirham. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> dirham, of course. طيب. And of course, as you know, brothers and sisters, have you ever heard of a person paying zakah and going poor because of zakah? Never. Bil'aks. As zakah, wallahi, it is a blessing. And wallahi, you will not go poor because you paid zakah. Some people, oh no, I have to pay zakah, my money. Akhi, wallahi, this is يعني, from the wickedness of the heart and the love of money. Is you're, you're not a slave of money. We've seen so many people, millionaires, they give zakah. What, they, they left, يعني, their money is lost? No. Number one, uh, and the second thing I want to say is the benefits of zakah. First of all, it's ibadah. It's an act of worship to Allah. Second is that you benefit the poor, you help the poor, and this is one of the pillars or one of the concepts, the main concepts of Islam is that we help one another. And know that this is an important note. Zakah is only given for the Muslims. Charity is given for anyone. Zakah only for a Muslim because it's ibadah. And Allah Azza wa permitted zakah for Muslims. Non-Muslims give them charity, no problem. But zakah only for Muslims. The third thing that I want to say is that zakah will lower crime and will enhance economy in a country and a society. If you give the poor money, you might, you would be the reason for him to stay away from crime, stealing or maybe doing some, uh, some uh, you know, breaking the law uh, for certain things because he wants money. So wallahi, this is something that is wonderful. Today, one, one charitable organization yearly, because of zakah, no, they collect more than a hundred million. A hundred million. Imagine a hundred million every year is being given to the poor and nobody's losing his money everybody got their money a hundred million is given to the poor shared for the poor imagine if all the countries do that wallahi we will we will solve the problem of poverty basically saying if everybody gives their zakah poverty is gone in this world but lil asaf what do we see poverty is increasing and the rich is getting richer and the poor is getting poorer because of leaving zakah and because of leaving actually the, the, the orders of Allah and using riba and usury and all this stuff. This is, this is uh, a punishment from, from Allah on us when we leave these things. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith said, As-sadaqatu tutfi'u al-khati'ah kama yutfi'u al-ma'an nar. Sadaqah, when you give charity, and that's the lowest of them, zakah is even greater than sadaqah. You give charity, it will put down the fire of sin. The fire of, uh, of sinning and wrongdoing. طيب, how much time do we have? When is the adhan? Can you... 26 minutes? 6 minutes? 5 minutes. <laughs> okay, I was hoping that I will complete the whole hadith, but I don't think I will. So we'll talk about Islam today, and tomorrow or next week we'll talk about Iman. We'll talk about Iman. طيب. The third is Hajj al-Bayt. Hajj al-Bayt or Siyam Ramadan? Zakah. Oh, Siyam Ramadan. Siyam Ramadan. Taban, Siyam Ramadan is one of the greatest acts of worship and it has a special level of, of uh, يعني, virtue to Allah Azza wa Jal, from Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why the, Allah Azza wa Jal in the Hadith al-Qudsi, He said that Kullu amal ibn Adam lah. All the acts of worship for Ibn Adam, the son of Adam, is for you. Meaning that you will benefit from. Illa siyam. Only siyam. Why? Because you refrain from the basic necessities of survival. Eating and drinking and multiplying or intimate relationship. Yani that is by itself, it is like you, as if you're saying you're endangering your life for the sake of Allah. And that's why Allah said, فَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ this is for me, purely for Allah. You're not going to benefit from it. And I will reward you. What is the reward, Ya Allah? He didn't tell us. But he told us what is other than that. He said, Kullu Amr ibn Adam in another hadith, in another narration, he said, it is tenfold the reward. And I will multiply it maybe a 700 times more. Illa siyam. He said, siyam is different, special. Keep it aside. This is how great siyam is. This is how great Siyam is. I don't want to get into the fiqh of Siyam because Ramadan is really far away. Inshallah, maybe next time we can, uh, next year, Inshallah, we'll talk about Hajj al-Bayt. Hajj of the Bayt, there's two types. There's one that's obligatory 
and there's the minor hajj, which is Umrah. Umrah. My, my, my mentors and teachers always tell me this. Tell me, Faris, if you have low iman, you're feeling down, you feel, go Umrah. Go Umrah, it will fix you up. Wallahi, this is a blessing from Allah. Today, it is easy. And I'm saying easy as in commu commuting. Traveling there, it is so easy. Two hours, you're in, uh, two hours three hours maybe with the, with the car, you're in, you're in Mecca. Very easy. You know, before he goes to Umrah, he doesn't know he's coming back before planes and, and all this technology. He goes to Umrah, he doesn't know he's coming. The man goes to Umrah, he doesn't know he's coming back, he's not coming. He goes for months. Imagine somebody from Syria, from Andalus, from Africa, traveling to Umrah. How? It's, it's, a, it's a matter of survival. And people would do it. People would do it. And today we have it so easy. Save up a little, a little, a little bit of money. And you go to Umrah, two hours, three hours, you're there. Same day, you're back. Same day, you, are, you can be back, it's fine. So this is one of the blessings that we have today, Wallah alhamd. Don't neglect that. And Hajj al-Bayt is the obligatory one that you have to do at least once in your life. Ya akhi, today, Wallahi, this is saddening. This is very yani, unfortunate. We see Muslims, they will save up for a house. They will save up for uh, going to Disneyland. They will save up to go to any other country. Even worse, to a non-Muslim country. They will go and save up to any materialistic things, a car, whatever. And I'm not saying don't do that. Do it. It's good. Save up for a car, for marriage, for a house, for everything. But yeah, he keep a little bit for Hajj. Save up for Hajj. Make it a priority in life. Make it a goal in life. Hajj is a pillar, pillar of Islam. So this is something that's very important. And I, I also emphasize on the youth. Today you're young. You can go to Hajj. Tomorrow you don't know what's going to happen to you. You're either dead or sick. Today you see the sickness from yani, around us. It's, 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 uh, it's crazy. Everybody's getting sick now. You don't know what's going to happen to you tomorrow. You get old and then you're gone. SubhanAllah, one of the blessings of Allah that my father, when he was doing Hajj, he did, it, he did Hajj when he was old. He was doing Hajj. While he was doing Hajj, at the last bit part of Hajj, he got sick and now he cannot travel ever again. He got very sick. And now he can never travel. Alhamdulillah, I always remind him this. I said, Wallah, it's a blessing from Allah. Allah made you do Hajj, and then that's it. He stopped your traveling. And Wallah, this is something that is yani, alarming for people. Don't, don't neglect that. طيب. Let's just conclude. And uh, ready for the questions? We have two prizes. The rule is, you have to raise your hand. And I have to tell you, yani, uh, I'll pick the, the pe person who asked. I didn't ask yet. <laughs> Let me ask and then we will. <laughs> Just in case. Huh? <laughs> طيب. uh, the first question is name. I'm not going to make it too hard. Main f name four, four conditions of Shahada. I want four. Huh, Ustad Mahmoud? Al Sidq, Al Ikhlas, Al Mahabba, Al Ma'rifa. MashaAllah. Barakallah. Mabrook. Zakallah khair. Taib. That means he's paying attention. Okay, the second the second question. Second question. Two conditions. The two conditions of fasting. What are the two conditions of fasting? Sorry, sorry, not fasting. Sorry. Zakah, zakah. Two conditions of zakah. Yes, sir. Okay. Taib, the first condition I want a complete answer. The first, the first condition is that you said the amount. In money, what is the minimum we said? 19,000, which is equivalent to what? Uh, in gold. I'm pushing it now, huh? The guy answered, خلاص. <laughs> right? <laughs> 80? 85 grams of 24 karat gold. Barakallah fiqh. Can someone help me uh, send it? Barakallah fiqh. Thank you. I have only two prizes. I'm huh? sorry. <laughs> Inshallah, next time we'll increase the budget and we can get you more stuff. Do you guys have any questions? I know I spoke a lot. So maybe you guys have some questions. Yes, sir. Next week, every, every Sunday after Maghrib. Yeah, so between Maghrib and Isha, 
we will have this dars inshallah and we will continue it's a series yeah Oh yeah, Thursday. Thursday we're starting another uh, class, inshallah, seerah. So this is gonna be fun, inshallah. So we're gonna we're gonna read about seerah, maghrib, also maghrib. Thursday this masjid, uh, maghrib prayer, we'll have seerah, seerah class, inshallah. Yeah. Yes, sir. What's that? A Dubai. What is that? Uh, two conditions of Hajjul Bayt Ah, Hajjul uh, Pilgrimage Hajj Ah, no, no uh, the two con Not two conditions, I said two types of Hajj One is minor, one is greater The minor is Umrah They call it minor Yeah, Hajj al Sagheer Hajj al Kabir is the Hajj that we know Obligatory one Yeah, this is what I meant any other question? Yes, sir. Malikum salam. Yeah, Hijri year. Before one year? Yeah. Sometimes this happens because of convenience. You know, the, maybe the, before the year ends, maybe he says it's convenient for me to pay now, maybe one month before or something. That's fine, inshallah. That's fine, Allah Ta'ala Alam. But, يعني, the, Allah Ta'ala Alam, it should be close to the year. Close to the year, it's fine, inshallah. Because of convenience, or like, you, you, uh, if the, the, the Hijri year comes, maybe you're not able to. Something happens, you're traveling, you're doing, something is going to happen that may, might stop you from paying it. So if you want to pay it before a, sh a little bit, that's fine, inshallah. No, this is, it's a condition, shart. So better to, to wait. If you can wait, then wait, it's better, of course. Allah Ta'ala. Yes. Yes, sir. What? Yeah, so uh, with items and assets, if you have an item and asset for tijara, for investment, to make more money from it, this is the concept of zakah. Uh, sorry, just to repeat his question. The brother is asking, what are the things that are not eligible for zakah? So car, gold, things like that. They say that zakah is eligible on things that you are investing in. So I have a number of cars that I want to sell and make money from. You have zakah on that. You, want, you have gold that you want to sell and make money from. There's zakah on that. And of course, uh, money, the, uh, gold that is used by women, men cannot use gold, haram. By women, it is, that doesn't have zakah on it. Yeah, that do, uh, use gold does not have zakah on it. Uh, we all know that there is, th there is a difference of opinion among the scholars about this. But Allah Ta'ala A'lam is that zakah on gold used, it doesn't have, uh, sorry, gold used doesn't have zakah on it. Yes. Even if, if it is used, no. No zakah on it. No zakah. Allah Ta'ala. Taban, like I said, this is a matter of fiqh and it is a difference of opinion. If some alim that you trust and you follow says there's zakah, you are, if you trust him, then go for it. <laughs> you, you follow him. But what I know and what I have studied, that there is uh, no zakah on, on that. Yes, sir. Yes. Anything that you want to make money from, tijara, yes. property, cars, gold, uh, items, computers, mobiles, making money from it. Yeah. Allah Ta'ala. Yes, sir. Men, <laughs> any gold use, but طبعاً, with men that's a bit weird because it's <laughs> haram to be using gold, right? It's impermissible in Islam for a man to use gold. صحيح? Yeah. Yes, sir. So, 
See, Allah has a, what is the ruling? Uh, let me uh, repeat the question. What is the ruling on people who work in the medical field and sometimes because of their work they cannot pray in masjid and maybe they cannot pray the sunnah? Allah Azza wa Jal qal, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Fear Allah and, you know, complete the worships of Allah as much as you can. And so if it is, if you really truly cannot, cannot do namaz in masjid, do it wherever you are. Alhamdulillah, that's a, a blessing and a mercy from Allah. And sunnah, if you cannot do it, it's a sunnah. But my advice is that try to do more sunnah when you can. You get back home, if you can. You get back home, I know you're tired or something. But when you get back home, if you have the energy, do the sunnah. Yes. A pray. You can pray sunnah, right? Open. So pray that. Just to get used to it. And by the way, I, I always say this. Some people, maybe they are tired, they are lazy to pray while standing. Pray while sitting. It's fine. Sunnah. You can pray while sitting. Yeah. Of course, more rewarding, standing. But if you cannot, you're feeling lazy, don't miss the ajr. Don't say, because I'm lazy, I'm not going to pray. No, pray while sitting. At least pray it, you know. Allah Ta'ala alam. Tayyib, last question, inshallah, so we can... Yes. No. See, uh, the brother is saying we are getting, sometimes people are getting money on a, on a maybe monthly, weekly basis, whatever, maybe because of tijara, you know, uh, retail, business, or salary. What should we do? The shart is that any money, any amount of money that has, any, for example, I'll give you an example so it's clear. You have 100,000. This is in your bank account. And this 100,000 is as it is, but throughout the year, it's increasing. So you have it in January, February, March, April, May, it became 150. Then the rest of the year, it became 180. Then it came back at 150 until January. What do you do? That 100,000 that completed a year gives zakah on it. That moving thing that didn't reach a year, Disregard it. Clear? Yeah? Tell me. Uh, yes. Any money that completes a year. Anything that's moving between that, that doesn't count. So my advice is that sometimes it is difficult to calculate. What I, what I advise to do is that uh, take a note. Put notes. Your money that I, I have and you have... You know, you know that this money is going to stay. So keep a note of it and keep a reminder. Or sometimes, I'm not sure. Was it 100,000 or 110,000? I'm not sure. Give more. Yeah, give sadaqa shwaya more in case. That's fine, inshallah, also. Make an accurate assumption. Allahu ta'ala alam. Tayyib. Jazakum Allah khair. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Jazakum Allah khair.